Hello, Lizzie here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a fabulous bag, which of course is this bag here. And it's called Fabulous, <laughs> so you won't have any troubles telling anybody what a fabulous bag you've made. <laughs> I think that would do you the power of good. So this is what the pattern looks like when you download it from the website. Um, so if you go to the shop, you can find it there. If you're a, a, a member of my sewing group, then it's free to you um, for this month of uh, February right into March actually um, and it is the most fabulous bag um, quite an easy make actually um, one or two little tricky bits but uh, nothing that I know that you can't handle and um, we've for the first time we're using a buttonhole as a closure which is really quite nice to do so get those machines uh, looked at for buttonhole making look at your manufacturer's instructions have a little practice and then you'll be able to create the wonderful little buttonhole like this well actually it's not so little <laughs> I decided we should have a big statement button. Um, so yeah, so we've got the patchwork on the front, we've got the solid base, we've also got an oval base, and there might be bits stuck to this, but there's an oval base, really easy to do actually. Um, the back is the same, just different patches, so um, get those uh, scraps out of your drawers and cupboards and wherever you stash them, and put together a lovely patchworky bag. Now this is actually a bit of a mashup between Oakley and Amelia. So if you know my patterns Oakley and Amelia, you will recognize certain details of it. For instance, Amelia uses patchwork, but actually it's at the bottom. So um, you'll be able to see how that's been made. With Oakley, we use the sort of double strap here. The, it's, it's binding, but it's a one inch binding. So um, it creates this really strong uh, sort of, um, it's kind of like the structure of the straps really. Uh, it's really great. Now it has absolutely no pockets and there was a reason for that. I wanted to keep it really simple so um, lots of people, lots of you will make it. That's the idea. It's a great scrap busting project but it's also a great project to get your teeth into if you've lost your sojo. <laughs> Some of us do from time to time. Even I do but actually what I do is I just kind of plow through and then it's sad comes back. So there's no pockets but of course you can add your own and if you've been following me for a long long time then you'll know that I have videos all over the place for all sorts of uh, different patterns where it'll show you how to put pockets in, um, zip pockets, hanging pockets, just uh, regular patch pockets, all sorts of things. So if you want to you can just go back at previous videos and find that uh, pocket that suits you. Um, but on this one I really 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 wanted to keep it simple there's a reason for that and not pure laziness on my part <laughs> it was because it will encourage you to a make the project and then if you make it again you can think about or oh, maybe I do need a security pocket something like that but I thought with the button over flap that does kind of give you some security from anybody that wants to dive into your bag um, you know, it's a usual thing isn't it just be careful right I'm going to take the stuffing out, which, uh, which is actually our fabulous little cushion there, so we'll pop that on the floor. And uh, there's the lining inside. You can see what it looks like. Could do, probably could do with an iron. But um, the technique that I've used, uh, I've joined the bases together, which means that the lining is actually static. I can't pull that lining out, which means that it lays really well and it doesn't get in the way of the bits and pieces that are in your, your bag. So it's a great technique for keeping everything everything really um, uh, non-fussy I suppose because you don't have to worry about keep poshing, pop, popping the lining back down it's all joined in so that that's great but you can see the sort of size of it it's a great shopper bag really but I wanted something for the summer um, and for the last two or three years I've been using Amelia which I love but I wanted to just do a kind of a bit of a mashup as I say and this is slightly bigger I suppose it's about the same size as Oakley to be honest um, I didn't to really sort of take notice of the sizes of that um, but it's certainly bigger than Amelia but I think it's going to be quite a useful make so like I say it's got the security of the button so if we just pop that close now I've done a horizontal buttonhole if you want to you could do a vertical one and I'll show you when we come to make up what that would look like we'll chalk it in you can have a look um, but I quite like the horizontal I'm not sure there could be a difference, you know, between the two. Maybe on a coat you would have a vertical, wouldn't you? I don't know. 
it's all down to personal choice isn't it anyway there we are and of course the patches in this case are um, pre-washed sorry pre-worn and washed fabrics from Kim Porter um, and it's shirting fabrics so mm, could be a memory bag too so we'll pop it down on the floor just to get it out of our way so let's have a look let's have a look on the overhead what we've got um, now <laughs> I've got five buttons because I really couldn't decide yesterday what um, button I have a sneaky suspicion I'm going to use this one here. I really love this, but I love that one as well. So I'm going to just wait until the moment comes and then I shall choose a button. So I'll pop those to one side. They're all about the same sort of size, about an inch and a quarter. Um, and I'm hoping they're going to fit in my buttonhole attachment. We'll have a look um, when, we, when we come to it. So I'll pop those over there. So this is my strap binding and it's like the same with any binding. Um, it's, oh, well, for making a strap, it's a one inch strap, but it's cut so you fold the edges, the raw edges to the middle and then fold again. And what I strongly suggest you do is use some best press or so flat or a product that will give you a little bit of starching and press it within an inch of its life so it's really flat this has been under my steam press and then before you before you need it you know um i would roll it up like this and pin it and that keeps the, the straps really flat because it makes a huge difference when you come to stitch it that it's been pressed really well and it's kept flat so that's a, a top tip from me so we'll pop that to one side um, the lining I've already pre-done just to save a bit of time and I'm using lots of these fabulous Japanese fabrics um, oh in fact they're Chinese fabrics <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, and these are all purchased from Chang Fabrics so you can go there and have a look um, if you wanted I, I'm, I think they're still trading I'm not too sure but I just happen to have a stash and they're like um, they're a bit like um, batiks they're made from bean paste um, and all sorts of different ways of creating these wonderful wonderful fabrics they really are superb so that's all done and I don't know if you can see on camera but I've actually marked out the corners here ready to cut um, a little bit later I've already put my base on as well um, but the procedure for the outer bag is exactly the same so you're not missing anything and then with the tab um, this is the tab that goes over now you might notice this is a slightly different shape to the one that I showed you on the bag um, let me get the bag and I'll, I'll quickly show you um, what that looks like yeah so that's more sort of a pointy maybe a pennant shape now the reason for that and I wanted to tell you about this because this is important I use this ruler you'll have a template in the pattern similar you're just going to have this corner piece here and I'm using the three inch radius corner on all of the projects I don't know if you can see it let's pop it down on my desk there we are so I'm using this big corner here and a lot of you I know will have this ruler if you don't as I say there's a template in the pattern and it really does depend I use this because it's thinner it really does depend how you place your ruler on the end of your fabric as to what shape you get. So for instance, if I lay this, uh, so this straight edge here, let me move it and then I'll bring it back in like that, is on the fold, then you'll get that lovely uh, smooth curve. If you bring this back and have this straight line on the raw edges here, then do you see you have that different shape? And, and I thought that was really important to show you that. Uh, so for this one, I'm keeping it so, just so it's different, um, I'm keeping it so this is the fold of my tab and the straight line of my three inch radius corner is against the fold here this is the raw edges along here and that gives me that smooth cut there so as I say if I bring it back and put it on the straight edge here then my curve and hopefully you can see that is sharper so it gives me more of a, a pennant look I think so I want you to bear that in mind when you cut yours out that you have the two choices of using either a smoother edge or having it more as a pennant. Um, that's, it's good to show that you can do different things. 
So this with this one, I decided to go a little bit more um, smoother. And if we offer one of the buttons up, I mean, it still looks sensational, doesn't it? So, you know, the choice is yours. And I love it that we, we can give you a choice. Now this fabric, um, it doesn't really have a right and a wrong, but if you look at it long enough, I think it actually does. So I'm going to pop those together for a little bit later. I'm going to follow the pattern as best I can. As you know, these sometimes these things go horribly wrong. You need two long pieces of binding. Now this is cut on the straight. The binding that I showed you before is bias because we need to go around curves. Now you can, if you want, try a straight, it's more economical to do a straight binding, but you might struggle going around the curves of the bag. It's just a sort of a heads up that if you think you might want to sort of cut a few corners, so to speak, um, the bias binding is better. But this denim is actually stretchy. It's a stretchy denim. I don't know if you can see that if I pull it, it's stretching. So actually, it wouldn't matter too much so bear that in mind um, I've used denim you could use a very lightweight canvas um, I, I do suggest that you use something a little bit stronger than a or heavier than a quilting cotton but that's all down to your choices so the base the base um, has uh, the H640 already on it, but underneath here, and I'll just pull that back because I haven't quite stuck it um, good enough, is uh, Craft uh, Vaseline. You could use Decaville, Decaville Light or just Decaville Standard is fine. Standard is probably better because we want a, a nice solid bottom. So I've already stuck my craft Vaseline on there and you may well have that in your stash it's very stiff like Palmit Vaseline used to be um, and then I've put my H640 over the top of that just to give it a little bit of softness inside the bag now the other thing to have a little think about is that the base which is um, disappeared oh here it is <laughs> the base is actually been lined with H630 so all of the base and the outer, sorry, the lining bag is H630, which is a very, very lightweight wadding. And you might think, oh, that's a bit of, bit of overkill. But actually, I wanted the lining to be as soft on the inside as the outside is um, as well. So, but not quite as... Um, deep if you like with the with the wadding so so that's just a heads up that I've got the craft um, Vaseline on there Decaville Decaville light all good and the H640 over the top and quite difficult to actually get the heat through to the H640 to bond onto your base but um, if you persevere with a a cotton cloth over here or from this side if you persevere that will stick okay um, I deliberately kept that bit back so I could show you okay so that's that's that okay we're nearly there we're nearly there <laughs> just get those bits out of the way so this is the actual uh, one of the fronts to the bag okay and you'll see that I've already sewn my patches together this is all um, like a Chinese fabric okay it all came from Chang's it's just literally Chang's if you wanted to google it um, and as I said the it's made with like bean paste it's like batik um, applying the the bean paste to the fabric um, putting the dye in and then scraping it away and that's the the end result we've also got like shibori as well so that and you can feel it it's wonderful so lots and lots of different fabrics here that i've used just just as a, a difference so you can see what they all look like um and actually this has already been lined with with the h640 so it's got bits on it all over the place so this has got the h640 on it already so we're good to go with that okay so it's just a case now of joining the two together and putting the base on and that is the actual outer bag of the uh, is done which is really the easiest part so you've got um eight squares patches for both sides okay so 16 all together and then you've got your long base part which is obviously the bottom of the bag let me bring the bag up which is this part here okay and we're now going to stitch it onto the base
that's our first little job so we need to sew these right sides together um, and sew down the side seams so just make sure they're all lovely and lined up and we're just going to stitch from top to bottom that's the first thing we're going to do so let's bring the machine in make sure we're plugged in and switched on so it's a relatively easy project um, quite a bit of cutting to do with all the the binding and the um, the, the wadding because you're cutting a double quantity of wadding because we've lined the lining with H630 so I'm using my walking foot it seems to be my best friend at the moment sorry let's bring this in and I'm literally just going up the sides Now I want to show you something before I stitch the base on I've just remembered I wanted to show you something really interesting <laughs> you may not think it is but I do <laughs> and I only discovered this as I was making the first one and I thought oh I must tell you now the other thing you want to try and get is the base pieces lined up So that's our um, two side piece, our back and front of our bag made. And I want to show you something. And I'm going to do it because it was something in my head that I thought I needed to share with you. So that's what it looks like. That's the back and front created. Now in the pattern, a little bit further on, I'll tell you what step it is. Um, it is actually, um, step number eight step number eight is where you cut out the, the the top corners now I'm going to sh I'm going to do that now in the pattern it says to do it after you've put the base on it really doesn't make a difference as long as you're cutting the top edge basically and that's what I why I said after you've put the um, the base on, and then you're absolutely sure you're cutting it correctly so just make sure that you're up the top so you can see the patches you can see the patches here and when you come to I'm going to draw it and then cut it with my scissors when you come to put your template on whether it's the paper template or whether it's this one you're going to put your um, straight edge on the stitch line here so you're not going right over here so you're not cutting this out until it's stitched together okay otherwise your curves will all be wrong so you're moving that over and you're making sure that your straight edge comes down level parallel if you like with your stitch line and then you're going to you can draw around you can cut round straight away that this is a cutting ruler but I just wanted to show you what it looks like um, if I can get my pen to work on this H640 which looks dubious okay just about see it just about see it so um, you're cutting away this shape here so you're not going to be cutting a curve like that out that's not you're cutting it so it's going in okay and before you commit to anything let's draw the other side before you commit to anything just make sure check again that your patches are at the top where we're actually drawing okay so you can see what that looks like so that's the shape you're creating so we'll just check the bottom that is definitely the bottom <laughs> and this is definitely the top phew we, do, we don't want to make any mistakes with this because we'd have to create the whole thing again which would be very upsetting so use your scissors or your rotary cutter and cut these out now as I say I'm doing this now whereas in the pattern it says do it after the base has been put on and the reason for that is because it just makes sure that you're putting the base on the correct edge okay now <clears throat> when I let's just pop that away 
when I did this before, when I was making the pattern up, I was left with these pieces here. Now to you and me, that could possibly just be a piece of waste. Um, but actually it could also be the corner of your bag and I really really didn't want to throw this away I really wanted to in this in this video was to attach it to my base so I, this is kind of like an extra this is not in the pattern okay this is not in the pattern so using some scrap fabric I've actually still got some of this fabric left I'm going to um, cut these pieces out as a sort of lining so it's not quite big enough so we're going to do it like this so this is an extra guys um, and you don't have to do this this is an extra to the pattern it was only after I made the pattern up that I thought oh gosh how could we possibly throw this gorgeous fabric away um, when we could use it so I thought you know what I'm going to wait till the video and we're going to have a look see what else we can do with it now for those people that are followers of mine on YouTube <laughs> I know you'll get cross some of you will get cross about this I had a complaint the other day which <laughs> I don't take seriously I have to say because I just do what I want to do to say why have you shown us something different to the pattern? What's the point of that? Um, my reply was, because I can. And you can. Um, it's good, good for you to, to try different things and to experiment. It's good for the soul. So now we've got two pieces that are right sides together with our patches. So I'll kind of wrap round, you can't see very well, but there's our two patches there. And I'm going to actually stitch these together and turn through and you'll see what happens next, okay? I'm not going to stitch the top straight edge. I'm just going to stitch around the curves. And I really, really like the idea of this. And by the time I thought about it, I'd written the pattern, it was all done and dusted, ready to go, ready to do this video. And I thought, I don't want to undo the bag. I don't want to spoil it. It was, I love the bag. So I thought, I know, I'll do it on the video. <laughs> There's an extra. How lucky. How lucky are you? <laughs> okay. So, so my, these are my little semicircles now with my patches, yeah? Which I just cut out. So I'm just going to turn them through. Now you could use your pinking shears just to make sure that curve um, sits nicely, but I'll just do it as is. And I'm going to apply these to the seams of my bag so I'm hoping you'll because there isn't a pattern for this this is just an add-on this is something that I thought of as I said several times now afterwards so and that was the other thing I had a complaint about you talk too much yeah so <laughs> I don't know why people have to say that. Why can't they just not say that? Why do they have to tell me? Do they, do, do they honestly think that I'm going to do a video and not talk? Gosh, that would be so boring. Oh, I know. I'll do one of those kind of, um, I'm going to say it, foreign videos where you just have music, pretty music and pussycats. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> So I'm being cynical now. Right, so if you have a look on the overhead, this is my side seam here, yeah? So this will be the end of my bag. So if we have a look at the sample, oh, which Millie is sitting on, thank you, Millie, um, is this bit here, okay? Can you see? Um, it's that bit here, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to match that seam up and I'm going to 
attach this all the way around. I mean, I could actually base there, which I probably will do actually. Make sure it's sitting right where I want it to be. So it means that when the bag is made, and let me just show you at the front, it'll have that sort of corner piece there, which I think will look gorgeous. Um, and I've, I've lined it, you saw me line it, but you could just turn that uh, under a quarter inch, a um, bit like uh, English paper piecing, press it well and not have that lining. So that's that's up to you. But as I've never done it before, it's kind of let's let's see how it works. That's good fun, isn't it? So I'm going to baste it in place first. So I'm going to line that centre seam up with the centre seam of my patch. And I'm going to start sewing from there because I know that's in the right place. Um, just to make sure that you're not um, any more than a quarter inch when you're basting. And then I'm just going to stitch the other side down. Now, to be perfectly honest, I think I'll be happier going from the middle out. So just make sure that's all lined up. Okay, so that's the that's the semicircle in place, lined up with the, the seams of my bag. So now I'm just going to go round that semicircle just to top, it's your top stitching it really. I think that will really make a difference to how the bag looks. You can decide, once we've stitched it, <laughs> You can give me some feedback and tell me what you think. It's also, it was the fact that I cut off those pieces and they're beautiful pieces of, of fabric. It could be that you've used the most gorgeous Liberty fabrics on your project and you just look at it and you think, I can't bear to throw that away. <laughs> So it kind of stems from that. Okay, so look now, I've stitched that. And then when we come to put the bag together, it'll kind of be on the, on the corners. I mean, we're still, it's not going to be sort of stitched together so it's flat. It's got the oval base. But I think that will look really nice. We'll see, we'll see. It's all an experiment. So I'm gonna do the same the other side. And what I might do is get uh, get our John to edit this so you don't see it again. Okay, so I've put two those two patches on, so each end look great, don't they? I, th I think it's a good good use of a couple of what could be scrap pieces. And as I said, I've already cut now the pieces out for the um, straps, but then in the pattern. It tells you to do that after you've put the base on, so you don't make any mistakes putting the ba base on. So I'm going to turn this through again, and I'm going to just mark where the base is going to fit. So the sides are obvious, so this, it's going to fit um, on that side seam there. And if I fold this in half, so those side seams touch, I'm just going to make a little snip, which would be actually in the middle of the front of the bag and the middle of the back of the bag just so I've got a marker point. On my base, which is here, don't forget it's quite stiff because we've put that craft Vaseline in, I'm going to mark my north, south, east, west. So I'm going to fold it in half and again I'm going to take a little nick out, um, no more than a quarter inch otherwise you'll be in trouble. Um, make it so it's big enough for you to see or you could do a chalk mark, especially if you're using denim like me, a chalk mark is good. And then you're going to fold it lengthways, you're going to do the same again, take a nice little nick out, and the same again on the other end, just make sure all the seams, the, sorry, the raw edges are sitting together. So now we're placing the base onto the main part of the bag and using the clip marks that you've already cut out, make sure that you're putting the rounded um, ends of the oval base to the corners that we just attached, so the side seams. If you don't do the corners, it, this part here goes to the side seams. So get those put in first so you're all lined up. 
So let's pop a clip in. And the other end. So we're doing the short ends of the oval, the rounded ends, to the side seams. And then just find the centre of your bag where you've clipped, the centre of your base where you've clipped, and pop those two together. That's your marker. So we'll pop a clip in there and a clip in the other side. Pins are a bit are not strong enough for this part. And then what you can do is you can bring up the centres of those sections, those quarters, and pop another clip in if you like to hold it. It gives you a little sense of security that it's all going to fit nicely, and it will. The only time when these things don't fit properly is if your seam allowances or your cutting is just a wee bit off. But like all things, you can adjust. So just get those raw edges together. Again, that's the, another secret of stitching this together. The raw edges must always sit right on top of each other. Okay, so that's the base clipped in place. So we're now pop that under the machine. And you should really always stitch from the straight edge. So ignore the fact that you've got the base there. You might think you need to stitch from on the base. It's easier to stitch on the straight edge, which is of course the main bag and the base underneath. So as we go along, I'll be taking clips out. I'll be also adjusting and making sure that my raw edges are sitting together. Just adjusting the bag, making sure it all sits nice and flat. Use your um, stiletto if you want to hold those raw edges together. And adjust, adjust, adjust. Try and keep to a quarter inch seam allowance. So you'll notice that I'm just doing a little bit, adjusting, realigning, moving, just to get it so it's absolutely perfect. I think I've just come off the base there, so I'll, I'll go back and have a look when I've, when I've finished. So keep everything flat. Bring those edges together. come round to that last little bit now. And uh, certainly it helps having a walking foot on. So I'm just going to check that. And yes, I did come off. So I'm just going to take a few of those stitches out that have just caught it. It's funny how you, you kind of know these things, get a feel for it. That didn't feel right. So it's just a few little stitches I need to remove. There we go. This time I'll go from the base side so I can see, because it's on the straight edge so it makes it easy anyway. So just bring those together. Fabulous. Fabulous. Okay, now this is the interesting bit. 
Now, the lining, we haven't cut our curves yet. That's okay, we can do that afterwards. Um, in the pattern, you'll notice that they are both clipped out, but we'll, we'll do that in a sec. Now, with both of your pieces, your outer bag, your lining bag, is they are wrong side facing me, so you can see all the wadding. And I want you to join the bases together. So look for your clip marks again and pop a little clip in. Do the same all the way around. So you're putting base to base. And this is what's going to help keep your lining um, in position so it doesn't get all um, ruckled up inside. <clears throat> Oops got jumping clips there we go so this is what it looks like you might think oh gosh that looks a bit weird well yes it probably does look a bit weird but you've got base to base and what you're going to do now is stitch those together now then um, I suggest a zigzag which my machine won't do so I can swap my machines in a sec um, or you can whip stitch so you're going to hand stitch and this is this is nothing's kind of structural this is just merely holding the two layers together now i prefer a zigzag in this stage because it means that at some point it's going to get caught you know if you get a little bit confused going around all the corners with all those layers then uh, a zigzag will catch it at some point and it's not structural so it doesn't matter if it misses, misses a few stitches you don't need to get too het up about it um, so a whip stitch is good by hand because you can just go all the way around and just loop those two edges together so you're literally just binding them together but just keep within that seam allowance um, straight stitches are just a little bit more complicated because you've got to try and keep all the all of those raw edges together and also catch those edges and make it secure um, not so easy so a zigzag is good so I'm going to swap my machines over and uh, go ahead and um, uh, sew those two bases together and um, before I do that while that's straight and so it matches the pattern I'm going to cut out my curves on my lining piece um, now because I'm and I have used a gorgeous fabric I must admit I've sport myself a bit here um, and again you might want to keep these little pieces these patches for something else um, because they are lovely lovely bits of fabric um, not patched as before but still a nice piece I'm gonna I'm going to put it in the bin right I'm gonna swap my machine over so I can do my zigzag for, to join my bases and then I'll do the tab because it needs a buttonhole and my um, jukey here won't do a buttonhole at all it doesn't do a zigzag so I'm gonna swap those over so we can do those two things and then I'm gonna come back to this jukey because I love it so much Okay, so I've got my uh, UX8 in now. <laughs> so it, don't get me wrong, this is a lovely machine. Uh, I just prefer the other machine because it's, a, it's kind of semi-industrial. It's got a huge power and speed. Uh, but this is a gorgeous machine. Horses for courses. Uh, I'm very lucky. So um, we, <laughs> we got to the stage where we've got our two bases joined together. We're going to zigzag. Now I've got my stitch length on 2.4 and my zigzag width is 3.6. So I'll start with that and see how I go. So I'm just literally joining the two bases together. Can you see? So I'm just going to pop that under the machine and get everything lined up. Just going to increase my stitch length, otherwise we'll be here all day. <laughs> so it's on a three now, happy with that. So I'm just literally bringing those two layers together. Just be careful of your quarter inch seam allowance, try not to go into that. Um, see how you get on and with this machine it tends to lift the needle when it stops stitching whereas really we want the needle to um, stay put say in the fabric just helps with positioning everything again see how your machine copes with all these layers um, you may need to resort to hand stitching or not bothering at all. This is just, again, as I say, another little extra technique, I suppose. 
which is quite nice. Sometimes I also think hand stitching, like basting, before you do something is um, is a good security to make sure everything fits. So try and make sure that you're only catching the base of each piece. So that's all the base done, stitched together. Okay, we're just going to turn that through now. So we've got the, uh, the right side of the bag out. You see how those corners look now. Just give that a little push so it all sits nicely. Got lots of bits. Okay, and what you could do is just momentarily just bring that lining up and that'll help you make sure that everything is sitting nicely inside the bag. You can give it a nice tug and a pull and, and get it so it's sitting straight. Okay, so phew, that is our lining attached to our outer bag. Looks amazing, doesn't it? I love it so much. And what do you think to the corners? I think they look great. That's up to you, isn't it, whether you put those on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is the tab because we need the buttonhole. I'm, I'm going to use my UX8 for the buttonhole. And I want you to practice that buttonhole before you do anything. So let's bring the machine in. Let's retrieve some of my, my things. Um, so we're right sides together with the, with the tab. And we're just going to stitch around all of the size except that top, top short bit. So I'm not going to stitch that bit. We're going to go all the way around and turn through. So I'm going to pop my machine back on a straight stitch. And just go around the whole thing. Let's go back. I'm just going to curve around those corners there. It's almost like a sharp corner. I don't really want that, so I'm going to curve that around. Another little back stitch there because you want it to be secure because we're going to turn it through. So. Um, I'm going to get the pink and shoes on that just to make sure that it sits nicely. That's lovely. Okay, so I'm going to pop my iron on again. 
you might notice as I'm stitching along <laughs> that my hands are going bluer and bluer. Well, this is because of the natural dye that's in these fabulous fabrics. And um, it just go it's going to have a little bit of a gentle wash afterwards. You could, of course, wash your fabrics beforehand. Generally speaking, we don't wash our fabrics, do we, when we're... Uh, certainly, if you're dressmaking, yes, you definitely will. But generally, for any sort of crafting projects, we don't actually um, <clears throat> pre-wash our fabrics. Um, but in, if you're using fabrics like this, it's probably a good idea because the dye is coming off on my hands, which means that it will do the same for the inside of your bag. Should you use this sort of fabric? You might not at all. I just wanted to explain why my hands were getting blue. <laughs> I'm not gold. <laughs> okay, so that's given it a nice press. Okay, and I'm now going to top stitch all the way around to really neaten that off. I'm going to increase my stitch length to um, three. I'm going to pop this under the machine. I still think I have to put the foot down on this machine. And I'm sticking to my cream thread to do the top stitching. But you could use other colours. You could, I mean, I was thinking earlier, nice red, because the fabrics are from China. That would go quite well. And I thought, now I'll stick to the cream. Looks smart. Okay. So there's my top stitching done. You can see on the side camera there. So now we have to figure out where our buttonhole is going to go. And this is where I definitely use my chalk pen, especially because I'm using denim. And I'm, I'm definitely going to be using that button. You know how you kind of think of it as time goes on. So you want to find the center. Just make sure that you've got that center. And I would just do a rough line there losing my pencil here. There we are. That's it. So there's my centre there. And then uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can we can see that. Um, and then I'm going to just mark where my button will go. So I need the, my obviously my something has gone wrong with my pen here but Let's not worry about it. Um, I need an idea of where to stop and start. So I'm just going to put a mark either side of it. Um, just so I know that I'm going to start about here. So if I take that away, you just need to work out that's where it's going to be. You also need to figure if that is the place for your button. So depending on how that looks to you, I think I think that you probably could come down a wee bit. I'm a bit high up there, so <laughs> I don't know quite what I've done to my pen. Right, so I'm going to just bring it down a bit. So apologies for Millie. I think she's heard somebody interesting. So I'm going to start and stop here. Now, obviously, my machine will. It, ha it holds the button so it knows exactly where to um, stop and start with the length of the button. So, and yours will be similar to this. So this is my, my gadget that goes on my machine and we're just going to, we can bring that out quite a way. I think that's actually a full, full extension now. And I can pop my button in and just close it and lock it in place. There's my grab point for my machine. And it's actually, this is the start point of my buttonhole. So is this my, with my machine, it'll go backwards. And um, please use your manufacturer's instructions to work out how your buttonhole machine, you know, your gadget works. So um, let's just take my foot off. There we go. And and to attach it to my machine. That's it. And then I have to plug mine in. So it knows. <laughs> it 
torques to it and then I'm just going to change it to a buttonhole so I just do the first one there's lots of choices and then I'm just going to start so I'm going to start so the the start point is nearest to me and then my machine as I say goes backwards Your, yours might go a different way so please 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 test this out on a scrap piece of fat bath scrap piece of fabric first okay so let's find my chalk mark which is just there make sure it's straight so when you pop it in make sure that everything is straight you can make it parallel to something on your machine put your foot down so you're ready to go and make sure we're okay pretty confident let's go and let the machine do it don't touch it just be confident that you've got everything set correctly I can go faster if I want or I'll let the machine just go a nice steady pace and through the little gadget through the foot control I can see exactly where it's stopping and starting so I'm pretty confident that we've got that right and although it looks a little spooky just let it do its thing but do practice first and practice on a, on a double layer piece of fabric not a single layer stops when it's done so I'm not controlling that I have got my foot on the foot control but I'm not doing anything other than letting the machine do its thing so that is my buttonhole done super isn't it and then we can take the chalk marks off another time now then how I do cut my buttonholes open and you'll all be telling me how you do it and that's absolutely fine let me tell you how I do it I put my quick unpick right at the end point there okay right at the end and I go halfway so you just you've got to be careful you've got to go straight so go halfway yeah and then I put my quick unpick point at the other end and then I push it along until it meets where I've just cut and that makes the perfect buttonhole without any problems at all of going zipping through it all I've got to do is just snip that little piece off there and all is good with the world apart from the chalk marks but I'm you know I'm pretty cool with that so there's my button <laughs> let's have a look on the overhead and we can see how that looks look at that it's perfect 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 lovely perfect on both sides a little bit of trimmage okay so now it's time to actually put this onto our bag and I'm just going to change machines okay now we're ready to put our tab onto our bag so I'm going to unclip the lining from our outer bag so I'm just as you can see that's the lining is there I'm just going to push that right out of the way because I don't really want to stitch my tab through the lining as well so I'm pushing that lining right into the bag yeah and then you just need to decide which is your front and which is your back because at the moment both are the same so I think sometimes it depends on the fabric I, th I think I quite I think I quite Quite like to have that big block broken up there because that's quite stands out quite a lot I like it but it stands out quite a lot so I don't want it on the front I'm going to have it like that okay so let's have a look at the overhead now so what we're going to do is now you could base this together in fact let me just quickly do that I'll just quickly do that out of shot okay um, just to hold those two layers together and you're going to fold this under by about three eighths of an inch or half an inch and you can give that a press if you want to so you can see if we go to the side camera you can see what that looks like and we're going to stitch that down now my top tip here is just to stitch down this folded edge first then trim away right back as far as you can and then complete your kind of rectangle your box so you've got a nice neat 
uh, finish to your tab. Um, you want to, when you look at your piece, there's a measurement in the pattern of where you need to place it, but the centre of your tab should line up with the centre of your patches there. So I'm going to pop it um, about a halfway between the two. So we're, we're looking at um, about um, two inches from that seam there. So I'm going to just move it slightly. And you'll want to just pin that in place just through the tab and the back of your bag. So it's all sitting nicely in place. Let's make sure that one is. And you're going to fold that over and you're just going to top stitch all the way along to secure it. You're going to then take the pins out, trim it and then top stitch again, giving you a double line. If we look at the original bag, that's what it looks like. OK, so let's pop that under the machine. Now you've got quite a lot of layers going on here. If you find with your machine, because it's all down to uh, the motor, if you find with your machine that it just won't take the layers, then do a satin stitch or bind the edge of your tab and then stitch it down. Let's find my foot control again. So I'm just going to that edge didn't want to catch there for a minute keep it lined up all the way along now you could do this with a long seam a longer stitch like a three or you can stick to 2.4 whatever you're comfortable with so if we take that off the machine we we'll just trim that thread away so there's your first row of stitching. So let's take the pins out now, flip that back, and we're going to trim this right back, okay? So make sure you don't trim too much away. It's getting the angle right, isn't it? Trim it right away. Let's trim that little bit there. That's it. Okay, so it looks like that. And then you're going to take that back and you're going to do a second row of stitching just so it encompasses that raw edge there. Okay, so let's pop it under the machine again. Make sure it's sitting straight. <coughs> nice back stitch to secure. Use the edge of your foot as your guide if you like. It doesn't really matter how deep that second line is. Okay, let's take it out and show you. So there's your second line of stitching. So when the flap comes back, you can't see any raw edge. Looks really lovely and neat. Okay, good one. So we're nearly, we're nearly there really. So the next thing we can do is bring that lining out again just as you had before and clip it so it sits is sitting together um, let's get another clip here and now we're going to put our binding on now we're going to use our straight edge binding and this is the, the, the instructions I've given you are they're too too long, which is great. It means you can trim it back. And you're just going to slip the edge of your bag, the top of your bag, into the binding by about a quarter inch. And then we'll use a pin just to hold it. If you've got bigger clips, you could use a bigger clip, but we'll, we'll pin it for the, for the moment. And then you're just going to in, enclose that edge into the binding all the way along, all the way along, okay? And then we, we will trim it back, but I'll show you how to trim it in a second. We'll do that on both sides. And then we're doing a second row of stitching across the top for decoration. So I'm going to increase my stitch length to three. And we'll do this on both sides. 
So you're just tucking the top of the bag in and the lining by about a quarter inch. Now if you have really pressed your binding well, as I suggested earlier on, your binding will sit beautifully back and front and you will be stitching all the layers together at the same time. Okay, so look at the side again. See what that looks like. We'll do that top row as well. There we go. And then when we, we go trim it, we're going to trim it so it follows the curve around. But we'll do that in a second. Let's do the other side. If we look at the inside, that's what it should look like as well. So as, uh, it should be as neat in the inside as it is on the outside. But that's all down to the pressing of your binding. It really is quite important. So again, let's do the other side. Just make sure that your lining and your outer are sitting um, together beautifully and you might want to baste this I think I, I might have basted it in the pattern but it's worth basting those just to ensure they're, they're stitched together nicely so we just enclose that top again And check to make sure you're happy both sides. <coughs> okay, so that's our top binding done both sides. So now we're going to trim this back and you're trimming it so it's curved. If you have a look at the pattern, you can see that. Um, it, you'll see that it's curved. So again, so you're following, <laughs> following the line. That's a better way. Following that line. So it's not straight. It's actually curved. But the pattern shows it very clearly. There's a nice picture. Um, there isn't a guide for that. You've got to do that freehand. Right, so I'm happy with that. So those are my two top pieces stitched and then obviously my flap comes over with the, it's going to have the button just there. So now we need to do the long strap <clears throat> and you really do need to make sure that the, you, you clip this well in place. Now when we start off, I'm just finding some clips now, I'll probably end up taking them all out. I like things to be a little bit free and easy. So when you start, I want you to start with a straight edge. So literally, I've just got my scissors and cut right across like that. So raw edges there. We're going to start with that, just a little bit away from the side seam so there's not so much bulk. And then when we come back, the end piece, I'm just going to flip over top stitch and then just encase this over the top, the, the, the end over the top of this. So it's quite easy really. Okay, now my side seam has come undone so I'm just going to quickly stitch that. You know where we cut our shapes, it then becomes quite vu uh, uh, vulnerable. So I'm just going to pop that under the machine. So you, once you've cut those shapes out, you could um, stitch them again, stitch right up to the top because this is a little awkward, especially with the walking foot on. I'm happy with that now, it's a little bit better. 
Let's check the other side. I think I'll get away with that. <laughs> okay, so we're stitching the lining and the outer together. So again, you might want to go around all of these curved edges and baste them together. It's always easier. So we're going to start off, so let's have a look on the overhead. So you're going to start off with both of those layers together. So you've got, in fact, the side um, angle is a little better. So you've got the side seam here, you've got the side seam of the lining matching up. And you're going to start, as I said, a little bit further away. So either at the back or the front, that's up to you. Again, you're enclosing by about a quarter inch. It's not essential. So you're literally just popping the binding on back and front, catching the lining and the outer, and we're going to just top stitch that all in place all the way around the bag. When we get to this point here, we need to measure, um, I think in the pattern, excuse me, I'll just check just to make sure I'm telling you right, that you're going to measure 13 inches. I nearly said 12 and I know that wasn't quite right. So you're going to measure 13 inches at this point here on your strap. So probably best look on the overhead for that. We're going to measure 13 inches and that then becomes the strap, okay? But I'm going to do that on the machine, which um, you may find awkward, but I don't really want to break my stitches. And um, I suppose you could measure it, pin it, and then measure there, but it might move. You, you'll have to see. But I'll do mine on the machine. Now, if you, again, if you've got a free arm machine, it's perfect, perfect time to use it. So I'm just going to enclose my edges into my binding. And this is where you need the bias because you need to get that curve in. So I just need to get that started, get my needle in it. That's my third hand, my needle. <laughs> so I'm going to come up around that first curve. Like I say, if, you know, please measure this before, but um, like everything, because it's bias, that could easily move. So I'm keeping my needle in there. I want you to have a look at this, because this is exactly what you see in the photograph. So my needle is holding all my layers together, which is fantastic. And if I can get my chalk pen to work, goodness knows what's happened to it. Um, let's see if I can, I think I'll perhaps, I'll, oh, here we are, that's better, I think. I don't know. I think it's broken, but we'll, we'll give it a good shot. We'll see how we get on. But I need the chalk because it's denim. And what I'm going to do is I've got a mark here. And it's very clear in the pattern that you've got a mark there. You can just about see it. And I'm going to measure 13 inches from that mark along my binding. So I'm holding my tape measure. And tape measure is good for this. And I'm measuring to the 13 inch mark there, look. And I'm going to put a chalk mark there because that's where we rejoin the bag. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Your pen stops working. Anyway, so there's my 13 inches. And that's when I know that I rejoin the other side of my straight piece of binding. So I'm hoping that's um, clear enough for you. Okay. So you're literally just carrying on. So I think, I think we can see quite well there. And this is where, again, I keep saying, Pressing of the binding is absolutely your best friend. Okay, so I've got to my mark. My mark is just here. So I'm taking the other edge and I'm just going to bring it round and I'm going to slot it in. So the top edge of that binding here, the, the straight binding, sits against my chalk mark. And then that's that attached. So that has made my strap look. You can just about, just about see it. It's underneath my uh, walking foot. Okay, so now we're gonna just go all around all the layers. So just make sure that you're catching 
all of the fabrics so you're catching your outer fabric and your lining fabric but as I said before you might want to base those layers together and I usually do and my side seam has come adrift a little bit but we'll try and keep that together okay sorry my hands are always in the way so again we're coming up now to the second so th this is actually the back of the bag I'm coming up to it's almost like you're stitching armholes so just just make sure you're putting the, the correct amount of fabric in between your layers and you see so you're just about a quarter inch okay so that's my needle down holding all my layers together and you can put a mark there if you want to but that's the start of your 13 inches that little tab just doesn't want to behave let's pop a pin in it to keep it out of the way okay so again from here we need to measure 13 inches again so pop your tape measure on come all the way along your binding and there's our 13 inch mark there okay and again we'll see if we can get the the chalk pen to behave itself so there's my mark so when I come to the other side of the straight binding then that's where I pop that in so it matches so then I'll end up with another strap made out of the binding and because it's biased it actually becomes then quite soft so we're just literally stitching our binding now so there's my chalk mark so I'm just going to bring the other end of my bag I can take that pin out now before I stab myself and I'm just going to pop that between the layers so open up the binding pop that in I mean if you don't get it exactly lined up it's not going to matter too much as long as you're not out by more than half an inch I think you'll be fine okay so just make sure that all your layers are caught so we're coming back to where we started so in the pattern I say stop about four inches before the end I've taken it off my machine this is where we started and you want to measure how much you need to cut off okay so looking on the side camera there that's where I just stopped that's where we um, started so if I offer that up and I cut it here you have a little little piece left of your binding um, then we're then going to in the pattern it shows you you're going to fold over that by three eighths of an inch is fine just to make a neat end and then we're just going to encompass this end of the binding in there hopefully you can see that so let's just pop that under the machine it's one of those things where you could measure and make it fit as you go along but because we're dealing with bias I would say this is probably your safest bet I can give you all sorts of measurements but it might not work for you and that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be a good thing so pop it under the machine again and try and get your needle in where you left it left off okay then carry on as you were and then you're literally folding that end over your starting point now if, if at any point you have not caught 
your fabrics then just just unpick that little bit and catch it don't undo the whole lot it, you, it will drive you crazy so if let's have a look on the side camera let me just trim my end so it looks a little bit neater <clears throat> so on the side camera you'll be able to see what I've done. So my start point is under here and I've just brought that over the top. Now we need to do a second row of stitching and that will um, encompass all of that so it's nice and secure. But you can see what it looks like and you can see that that's where I restarted my stitching. So it's not too intrusive. Just don't do a back stitch, it's not necessary. Um, as I say, just have a look at your bag and make sure that you've caught all of the layers so it's all secure all the way around. Apart from obviously lots of bits of thread, which seems to always happen, I think we're all okay. So now I'm going to stitch that top row of stitching. So I'll start where I stopped. I'm just gonna make sure that my binding is sitting nicely on top of each other and not at an angle like it wants to be. And then we're just going to zoom all the way around. <laughs> it looks nice with the double stitching. need to back stitch just trim your threads okay so that is our bag made isn't it fabulous <laughs> so we just need to stitch that button on so what I want you to do is line up your bag line up the top bring your flap over and then you can see where that button goes you might perhaps want to give it a little bit of wriggle room don't forget the button needs to be on that center seam here. Okay, so what you can do is get a pin, pop that through the letterbox, and you know that your button is going to go just where that pin is. Hopefully you can see it just there. Measure it if you want, but I would just flap it over and just make sure that it feels comfortable. So let's uh, let's do that. The only trouble with darker fabrics is that you um, end up with lots of bits. They just have to pick it up, don't they? Okay. So I'm going to use a double thread. Now you could use embroidery thread or sashiko thread to to do this, or pearly cotton, just so it's. So pop your needle in, and this has got a shank. So it's going to sit nice and proud anyway. So I'll do a few little stitches just to secure those first. Sorry, Alexa, we don't need you. So a few stitches just to secure and then just uh, catch that in like that. And then you can go in from side to side. Oops. <clears throat> okay. So thread the needle through the hole of the shank. So I don't really want to go to the back. I don't want to make a mess on the back. 
so I'm just looping that through Of course with the shank it's going to feel wobbly. <laughs> I'm losing my cotton the whole time. So what's wrong with me? Um, it's going to feel wobbly but that, that's good because it gives you um, room to put that um, that buttonhole and it'll sit nice and flat. I just want to make sure I secure that well. Goodness me, I think I'm making a right meal out of this. Okay, so now let's secure that thread. leave a little bit of a tail as well I never cut right up close okay so there's my button stitched on really nice button isn't it really suits the fabric and then bring this over pop it through the buttonhole and there we are a really really fabulous bag with its fabulous corners well they're not really corners are they because they're on the curve I like them though Let's have a look at the other one. <clears throat> okay, so there's the other one. Slightly different denim actually. That doesn't have the corners on, so you might decide that that's the one for you, or you like to use those scrappy bits that we cut off and just make them a feature. Whatever you like, whatever you like. But as I say, it's got no pockets, so you can decide whether you put pockets in. It might be something that you want. You might think that that's secure enough. Depends what you're gonna use it for, doesn't it? So there are our fabulous bags. I hope you love them. And I'd like to see one made, please. Thank you very much for joining me today. Bye-bye.